everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and I'm so excited about tonight because we're going to be painting our first winter landscape of this season. I really love painting winter scenes. They're a lot of fun. They use interesting colors. They have a lot of techniques that are kind of more unusual for the season, so I like to be able to share those with you. I'm going to be explaining every part of how to paint this painting step by step, and I mean really explaining it. You're going to see how I mix the colors. You're going to see how I execute the techniques. I'm going to explain the concepts behind the text techniques on like how we get splatter for the snow, how we get a blended background, how we get soft trees to more in focus trees, all of that stuff. So that even if you're using slightly different materials than I am, you can duplicate this at home. To that end, though, if you'll check the description, and I'm going to point it down because I like to hide it down there in the description where YouTube gives me lots and lots and lots of extra words. You'll see three lines above the fold. The fold is what they say is like what they show you. I don't know. It's not actually a fold. It's a virtual flow fold. But if you open that up, if you click more, it's going to tell you a bunch more things, including a link to our website where there's a traceable. And then traceable allows you to transfer the image on the canvas. So if you don't draw yet, you can go ahead and paint along. And just so you know, officially, according to our, like, like all authorities, tracing is not cheating. <laughs> It's a technique. It's useful. I do believe in learning to draw, but I also think you shouldn't let a technique that you don't know yet stop you from trying a new project. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey, guys. You will hear him laughing and dad joking throughout the live stream, but he does another very important thing. He makes sure that you guys can see what I'm doing by tracking me with, I don't know, four or five cameras that we have that are all zooming in and he'll zoom in and make sure you see everything the brush is doing. He'll also um, sometimes ask questions that you guys have from the live chat during the live show because sometimes your question doesn't just help you, it helps people at home, and we really like that. I am so into doing this tonight. I am just ready to, as you can see, I'm like, I'm ready to de-stress. I'm ready to put down my work week. I'm ready to just enjoy some painting. And are you guys just ready to jump on in? Absolutely. So let's get going. All right. So over here, I have my example painting. This is the one where I was designing out my crazy winter scene idea. Um, this particular landscape would be what you consider from like my imagination, right? Like things that I like about landscapes that I put together in this composition. And I really enjoy it. I don't do that a lot, but when I do it, I always kind of have fun doing that and put that to the side. You can get your own copy of that reference off the website. This is a nine by 12 um, artist panel. Panels and canvases, same, same. Just really about your preference and if you have storage and what you have going on, including, hi, top of my head, including um, like if you wanted to use an art pad or something like that. This is the artist life. Uh, they come in packs. And there's a link to some of this stuff um, in the description and use the coupons. They're always on some crazy sale. Okay, you'll see words written on the canvas. Mm -hmm. The words. Okay, so for a long time now, really since we've been a really long time live, we have included wishes or hopes or thoughts that our view head again, that our <laughs> viewers. <laughs> I'm glad I thought about the top of my hair. Well, your hair's looking good today. So I guess it's high because it's, it's gone full 80s because it's in the field of camera. So maybe I need to stand back or well, something. I don't know. <laughs> um <laughs> I just lost my thigh. Don't fill my head. Because so <laughs> then I got to think about what's happening up here when I get ready. It's fine. Okay. So my cotton candy here. So viewers send this in, just things that are going on in their lives. And we like to put them on the canvas. You can do this or not do this. I do use Grand Osh watercolor pencils for it. Um, that's probably overkill. It's just I love Grand Osh, So I have it all around the studio. And therefore, you, you use what you have. Um, if you ever want to know what is a good watercolor pencil, that would be my recommendation. <laughs> love and healing for people who are going in love for healing, love and healing for the people and wildlife that are being affected by the wildfires in Australia from Samantha. And I would like to add that same wish to any region that's going through that. Have you noticed there's just a lot of wildfires lately? There, so, there does seem to be a couple happening in California. Yeah. So if you're in an area anywhere that is going through wildfire, we're just wishing love, healing, safety for first responders, uh, well-being for the wildlife and people in the area. Uh, Jennifer 
is wishing for healing for her stepmom, D, and strength in a really difficult health fight that she's going through. Um, Adarina, and I thought this was just very swish, is wi- sweet, is wishing for friends, love, and purpose for her nephew um, and for him just to be surrounded by kind and accepting people. And then uh, uh, Luna came by and saw me doing wishes my daughter, and she says she wishes that her big sister, Honey, plays with her. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good wish. And I felt like, well, I should probably put that on the surface because that will be helpful. Now, quick note, on this background here, which you see is kind of soft and swishy and fine, I'm going to really be demoing this nice big, uh, now this is a very serious brush here. This is a one and a half inch silver brush cutter. It is a blend of hog and synthetic filaments and they're best dressed and it does all this stuff. But basically, I will tell you, think of this as like that Bob Ross uh, brush that you saw all the time that just does the softy, softy sky in three strokes. Yeah. What it is is the engineering of this brush. And um, I haven't really tested every single one out there, but what I'll say is just a general brush like this will do this effect. So I love these, but, you know, if if you go by and get the ones from Harbor Freight, I don't think it's going to destroy your life in any way. The other thing I'm going to be using pretty actively is mops. I do have goat mops. I don't love goat mops. I use them in a pinch. And the reason is, is they get so wet with the, with the water from the acrylic painting. So I tend to want to use a synthetic. Um, and I've got a couple here. Just any soft blending brush that you have. It's really just a soft dry blending brush. I'm also going to be put those away. Using a splattering tool. Yeah, it looks like a toothbrush, but it's not a toothbrush. It's from my Galaxy set, and that helps us do the particulate. If, if, my friends, you don't have that brush on the webpage for this is a video about how to do splatter, and it gives you some other ideas of how to do it, so you don't have to have that particular tool right now. All the colors are listed in the description below, so I'll put these aside, but we're going to be starting out with Thalo Blue, Burnt Sienna, and Titanium White. This hot little tool in my hand is called an artist knife, if you're not familiar with it. Um, This is actually plastic, but it's a very special plastic, so it helps it be a little more resilient. And I'm going to start our background. Are you guys ready for a background? Absolutely. You sure? I am. You believe it? No. (laughs) But I'm here anyway. This is faith. With these, my big trick is to keep them from getting too wet. So you'll see I'm going to dip it just barely in the water because I really want the bristles to stay fairly free of water. And I'm going to go ahead and just brush away our watercolor words. Isn't that nice? Uh. It also sort of primes my surface with a little bit of moisture, which can be important if you're in an area where you're running a heater or air conditioning because you're changing the amount of moisture in the air and it can cause your paint to dry overly fast. Really scumble those out. You can see the Cran d'Ache comes with a lot of pigment. (laughs) It's a real art tool, and so it does give me a lot of pigment. Now, to begin this guy, one of the things that I'm going to do is, again, very little water. Look, just barely at the tip of the bristles. And I'm going to come get my white. And you can see, even with that, that just kissing, the kissing, of the brush to the bristles that it really wet the paint. And I'm going to brush this white right over it. I'm going to move through this next part fairly quickly. And here's why, guys. I just want to make sure this all stays wet. Gotcha. It's all that's happening. So I'm going to take a little bit of my burnt sienna into my phthalo blue. And it's going to make this wintry sky color. It's like that gray almost teal sky that sometimes you'll see in the cold months. I really love it. It's like my favorite. And so I'm going to make sure I don't have too much white on here and just come and load the brush. I just bring it to the edge. See how it's on the bristles? And you can even kind of get in there. Just work it in. So you've got some pigment in there. See that load? Now, ta-da, like a pirate. We're going to go swish, 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 swish. The brush strokes are kind of curved. Yeah. And my pressure at first will be quite light. All right. I'm just doing some light pressure. Load, load, load. I do want areas where maybe there's a little more pigment, right, than other areas. And that kind of implies 
a different little cloudy sky every time. Look at that little deal. Here we go. Super kind of cool day that's a foot. Then just very lightly brushing on, see just the edge of these bristles. Just getting it on. These brushes are incredibly useful for this type of sky event. And then where I have the lake, I'm just going to go back and forth. See how I just drag that back and forth? Yeah. Let's get some more of our blue and do that right there. Just go back and forth on that lower third of the canvas. Try to be level if you can. That's going to start to kind of hint at some of those things. I'm going to load up a bunch of my paint. And I'm going to do little taps that imply cloud forms. See those? Bunch of the pure paint. And then maybe here. That's sort of an implication of distant little clouds because clouds have these shapes that are light and dark. Yeah. I'm going to dust out the extra paint from my brush onto a towel and just come over this very lightly. Aha! A hog bristle has escaped. That happens very rarely anymore with my brushes just because they're well used and well washed out. But on occasion, one does like to set itself free and I got to go get it. Now I'm going to get some white onto here. And let's come up here and just enjoy adding a little bit of value. And another hair. Why is it? It's the, it's the, did you see that move that I made? So yeah. when I get a hair, let me stick a, stick a hair there. Okay, now it won't stick. But what I do is I come through and I catch it with a couple of the bristles. And then I come back and smooth it out. So that's how you would fix that. If ever you're just like looking at it going, what do I do now? There's a hair attached to my canvas. Just making some nice little wintry, free form little cloud thoughts, right? Look at that. Came back with a little bit of white in the corner, breaking up the shape. And that looks pretty wintry, doesn't it? Yeah. Now I'm going to put this to the side and uh, I'll rinse it out a little bit and I'm going to put it aside and give it a good wash after the show. You definitely, definitely want to rinse your brushes out. Wash your brushes um, after every single use. Not like the minute you use it, but like rinse them out, get the paint out. And then after every painting session, give them a thorough washing because it will extend their life quite a lot. Now, I have that, which is pretty cool. I like it. And I'm going to add my next color, my dioxazine purple. While you're doing that, can I give a shout out to our awesome community patrons? Yeah, please like do. Night Let Fox, me have a sip of coffee. Who is Wait, just who was it? Night Fox. Hi, Night Fox. How are you? Just dropping a little support there in chat for us. Thank you so much. Thank you you so guys much, make Night it possible Fox. for us to do this awesome stuff. So Thank you. We appreciate it greatly. Just Thank you. I love when you do that. Do you have any questions coming up while I'm putting out I some will, I will, You know, I will keep over here. Let's see. I thought I saw some some stuff come up here on what color. I'm just, I think there's to go over the colors there again. So um, what I have out so far, there are more colors listed in the description if you open it up. And if you just go to our webpage, they're all listed there as well. But what we have so our, out so far is thalo blue, burnt sienna, doxazine purple, quinacridone magenta, and some titanium white. And to that end, guess what I'm putting more out of? Titanium white. Now, this tube should give you a clue about a reality of painting. Notice how my white tubes are always like a zillion times bigger than any other color tubes. That is because you use a lot more white paint than any other color. And that is why I often recommend people upgrade mm. their white paint early. Whoa. So that they, um, that way they've got uh, more coverage because that's one of the first colors to, to update. I'm thinking here. So I've got this think? nice soft background, right? This is a very nice soft background. It is. Now, when I was designing this, and you'll see this in the step-by-step, -step, I had this beautiful purple cloud arrangement over here. and then. As artists are want the top of my head. As artists are want to do, just a pink don't fur. Let him do you don't that. Only, all you see is pink cotton candy in the corner. Don't let him do that. Doesn't look good on the replay. You get it. Don't emoji right now. Michelle was asking. <laughs> Stop it. So I had this big purple. We're not at. We're actually cool. Just y'all know we've been married like forever, so we're cool. And we had this big beautiful purple cloud here and purple cloud here, and then I painted a bunch of trees over it because I was having some fun. I'm going to this time, yeah, I'll put a little purple here, but I'm going to really focus most of my design and thoughtfulness about the clouds right there because that's what's going to be showing more. Because, mm. you know, after I did it once, I was like, oh, hey. <laughs> so 
Michelle was asking, do you use soap every time you wash your brush? Yes. You use soap when you wash yeah. them. Now, I have special soap that I make for my brushes, um, and it's designed to really get acrylic out of my brushes, and that's just because I've had a long, long journey with washing brushes. Um, what? What is it? Did I, what I do? Do you need to? Do, what I do? Is my puffy gone? <sighs> it just wasn't. It was just going working. So I make the soap. <laughs> okay, I make the soap, and uh, it's about pulling the paint out of the brushes. But I'm going to tell you, if you go to uh, any of our soap listings, even on our store, it tells you how to wash the brushes. If you do those steps with Dawn soap, you're going to do a lot for the life of your brushes. Like, yeah, I sell soap and it's awesome. It's amazing. The truth is, though, the first step to, to taking care of any of your brushes is just to wash them really well. And the process of washing them, the techniques of washing them are going to always be the same. So if you've got Dawn, that'll work. If you, if, I'm sure people are saying, oh, the brush soap. Uh, if you've got that, that'll yep. work. But it's really about washing thoroughly after every session and getting all the paint out of the brush because that's what ends your acrylic brushes the fastest. I have here a short handled number 20. Now, so you guys have some size relationship kind of a thing going on. Um, all right, here's like a Filbert number 16. And uh, this is an old flash from the past. This is a number 10 bright. Notice they're all kind of in that same size range. I just need a brush about that big. That's what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I'm going to get it a little bit wet. And I am going to take hmm, some of my magenta into my brush, getting it into the bristles, and then into some of my docks, and quite a lot, as you can see, of my purple. And I'm going to come here above my little ice line, as you do. And I'm going to make these little upward little motions. Yeah, we have it going. Let's flip some of those up. I think they're so pretty to do. And I know I'm going to have some happening back here because the trees, trees, yo. But I may not go as, as, I guess invested in that because I know my trays are going to cover up some of my pretty brushwork. Now, once I have that done, I'm going to take this blending brush a little bit damp and I'm going to just soften this. Is that what we're doing? Yeah. Soften this backwards little lake mist. Might come back here. So I'm gonna pull this back here. The paint underneath is kind of mostly dry. And what happens is, is once your paint's dry, it's not going to blend into the layer below that well. Uh, dampening the brush will help reactivate any of the blue paint that was maybe there. So that's pretty good. And now that is damp. So let's get a little more of our purple and a little more of our white. And let's make some little cloudy shapes, right? And I do these little flick ups because it starts to imply certain cloud forms. Get a little more magenta in there. I'm gonna put that down and let's, what are we gonna do? We're gonna grab our blendy brush, right? Mm. Blend it out, soften it up. Soften it. Beautiful, soft, cloudy, anything. And I can even come back into my white, look at this. And just use this brush to create a little bank. So here's where clouds get people. Is you think symbolically about clouds. Instead of what they are. Which is just kind of like. Motion and form and shape and shadow. That's being affected by every wind current. So if you think more like smoke. Sometimes. It'll help you think a little bit more about these beautiful low fog babies, all the little things that they do, because we're not trying to make little cotton balls. And the big thing about making smoky atmospheric effects is just making sure that it's soft, right? You can get away with a lot if it's soft. Let's get some more soft soft on here and make sure that this is soft soft through here. See how we built that up? Isn't that nice? Yeah. 
Now, if you need to rinse out, rinse it out, but you're going to need to get the water out of it. That's the other reason I like synthetic. And you don't, you just want it to be so lightly damp that when you come here, you can just move the paint gently without pulling what's underneath up, right? And that's why soft brush is important. Because if you pull what's underneath up, you kind of undermine the whole point of using the soft brush. <laughs> Let's just well, imply that. I think that's pretty good for where the trees are going to be. And then we've got yeah. the nice bit of interest right there. I like it. I do too. Do you have a question, Mr. Cooney? You said you know, a well thing. I have, I have an awesome art high for Beck. She's, she says we're amazing. And I say you're amazing, Beck. So Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. I'd like to say that, that my art ego is beyond compliments. <laughs> but much like all my other art countrymen, I do like them too. I appreciate them. They are appreciated. I'm a little more resilient, a little bit more of an air plant around it, but they always mean a lot. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, not as his wife. I'm completely not. I'm like a tropical thirsty thirsty plant with my husband <laughs> just in life you see how when i come just on the edge of these little bristles how i can just soften that paint just barely you have to leave yeah this paint. is not oils i haven't done one of those crummy things where you know i say it's acrylic paint and then paint with oils because that's kind of a bummer to do to people this really is acrylic it is drying on me i am dealing with all those challenges and that's how i handle them to get those softer effects all right, this is doing pretty well. I am very happy with that. Now I've got to kind of talk about, let me make sure this is rinsed out as well. My little land form here in its shape and the trees that are there, and maybe even start kind of getting into the frozen forward lake. And to do that, I think I'm going to get a number eight cat's tongue. What? Yep. <laughs> I am. And I'm going to put out a little bit of my cadmium red medium. Now, I could have done a lizard crimson as well in this piece. I just didn't, but it would have worked really well as a color. I'm going to take a little of my red into that purple. You know how we're doing? I don't really want the white into it, but it creates a sort of warm red purple there. This is the basis of that fall color. And I'm going to make a little mountain of land. This is my peninsula or little jut that's going to hold my nice cabin. That's wonderful. And then it's going to have some little lakefront. Now, there's a little trail that comes down here. So I guess in warmer weather, people can come down to that. So I'm going to make that little curve in. That's about three fingers from the bottom of the canvas in placement. And then I'll just wander that there. So that's basically the shape. Paint that all in any version of purple and red that you want. Any version is fine. Because this is the dark mass that everything builds up on. And it needs to be dark enough uh, to really sort of show the snow and everything that um, we're gonna lay on it. Because when we're painting snow, snow is a lot about value. It, it you use actually, you very rarely get to the pure white. That's just like a highlight or a special moment in your snow. That's what it is. It's a highlight or a special moment. So the number eight cat's tongue, but you could use a bright, you could use a filbert. You do not have to use the brush I'm using. Not required. I think I'm going to kind of come in and maybe make my, my little short edge more interesting, a little wobbly as you do. Doesn't need to be that detailed or perfect because we're going to paint a lot of stuff over it. So you know how that goes. Mm. Now I'm going to get some of that red purple that I have here. As you have it. And here's what I'm going to say. There is coming back here sort of this tall tree form. Let's grow him up by making a nice little line that comes up to about here on the surface. Now, how do we talk about that little tree form? Didn't mean to get the white into there. I'm going to come on the edge of my brush. And 
and I'm going to make these little shapes. My tree is going to come out and in and out and in. It'll be a little wider at the bottom as, as this mass has like bushes and stuff. But what I'm doing is I'm talking about this more distant tree. And whenever we're talking about a more distant tree, it needs to have softer edges. Let's tap here. I'm going to just tap up and down. See how that makes a very soft edge? It needs to be a little bit softer so that it feels distant because that way we can put hard or clearly distinct edges for the objects that are closer. And that kind of helps us create some space inside of our canvas where we are, let's be honest, playing quite a lot of make-believe. I'm going to just go ahead and that's still a little wet there, so it's blending. You can see how the paint on top now blends a little bit into what's underneath. Where could I put a little, little, just how I do my trees is I, I try to think about places for birds and squirrels to be. Mm. Sometimes it helps me think about like, well, where would a bird and a squirrel get to go if things got weird? Does it have a place to put a nest? And you can see that the little motion is kind of a, a very like touching the canvas little motion. Little bits of something happening there. And then when we come down here, we'll go thicker, right? Because mm -hmm. this is a, this is fairly much a deep mass of, of something. You can even get into that darker purple. Let's uh, get a little tree friend maybe like right here. Nice little tree friend. They've been buddies since they were seedlings. And they, uh, they grew up together and they seen so many nice little summers and winters. You can see I'm just on the edge of that brush right there. On the edge of that, making that little kind of circular motion and enjoying that wonderful little shape. Notice how the shapes are going in and they come out and they wiggle around and go back in. And remember, like, if you're painting along, the step-by-step -step will show this layer. So if you really need to look at how those shapes are formed, that's going to be there for you. That's why I started doing those so you guys could know where I'm going in a painting kind of before I get there. So it's not mm. such a, 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 just a, gosh, I hope she has a painting planned kind of moment for you guys. Because that's what it's a little bit like when you're following a tutorial, isn't it? It seems like they had a plan. There's a thumbnail. I hope, I, I hope the thumbnail's true. <laughs> That'd be nice if it was true. Because I'm going to do this this evening. So I'm adding a little bit of bush here just above. You can see that there's a almost a texture or a shape to even the brush strokes themselves. I may need to dip. And when I say dip my toe, what I'm really saying is I'm taking just the edge of the brush and getting a drop. See how this, just if I go just to the toe of the brush, I just get a drop of water. That's all you need. Let's come up. This is our tallest tree. So let's come up. Let's really think about that and go way up here. <gasps> tallest tree. I got a little bit taller this time. Apparently, I, I grew up my cabin. I don't know what was happening there. Sometimes you go grow a tree a second time, and it just, there was time between that canvas and this canvas, and the tree got bigger. <laughs> I always think it would be really interesting um, as a painter if you had, like, an enchanted canvas, and then every time you looked at it, the scene would change view a little bit, or um, maybe seasons, or... The birds would move. Wouldn't that be interesting? It would be. Or scary. I don't know. It probably depends on, like, the scene. If it stays pretty, it's, it would be enchanting. If it got, you know, it appeared in there, it would be, like, less fun. You'd be like, I don't really want Pennywise in my painting unless I put him there, and then he should definitely stay still. <laughs> Once painted. Because <laughs> I'll tell you what would happen. This is what would happen if I painted a painting and Pennywise got in it. That painting would get gessoed. <laughs> And I would probably have uh, somebody bless that gesso for sure. <laughs> we wouldn't be messing around at all. Adding a little more purple down here. Just deepening the color. Can you guys see how we're doing that? As a paint is drying, we're just deepening that color. 
That's nice. Do, 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 do. A little bit of the red. Just painting a little tree going up. Isn't that a wonderful tree? All right. We got that, that next layer in. We're doing so good. Now we do need to get a little, little bit of a bush kind of coming down here just to talk about it. You know, a little bit of a, of a thought of the, of the shrubberies. Coming shrubbery? Down. Shrubbery! Now, the Knights of Nice say shrubberies! So, as I understand it, if it's a North American plant, it's a foliage. If it's a Northern European, it's a shrubbery. As is that like some say, sort of internet technical thing, or are you just having a moment? I, I think that this is the rules of Monty Python. Okay, I'll, well, those supplant even Wikipedia, in my opinion. All right, so look at us. We have planted ourselves a little bit of a landscape, right? Let's take that in for a second. I'm going to sip my, I shouldn't be drinking at this late coffee. Mmm, envious. <laughs> Ah, how are you guys doing? Take a deep breath in. <sighs> Relax that body. Make sure you're not carrying any tension in your jaw or your neck. Because sometimes when we're painting, we concentrate really hard. Especially when we're making things like trees and clouds. It is easy to get in a weird position. So every once in a while, I like to remind you guys to see how the spine and neck and your body's feeling. Do we have any questions? We have lots of questions. I can take some questions. So... On a scale of one to three, how many, uh, how, what, what, what is this one here? I rated this as a three hoot, um, just because we have a lot of techniques and weird color combos here. And some, I just try to imagine how hard it will be for you guys. Sometimes I'll rate something like a one hoot and you guys come back and you're like, lady, you crazy, that's three hoot. Sometimes I'll say three hoot and you guys are like, it's so much easier than that, it's a two hoot. On the website, uh, we have my rating, my, my guess for what I think your experience will be. And then you guys get to come back and argue with me and say yes or no. It's totally cool. <laughs> with a with a uh, right in voting system. Where did mm. my yellow go? There it is. Cadmium yellow. A color I quite enjoy. Quite, quite. And I'll put out some black and we'll talk about the colors that are out right now. So, yeah, I would say three hoot. Hoot a meter of three. I'm going to put out a little black. I didn't need to be next to that yellow, but that's how that worked out. <laughs> now, one thing that we're going to start to do is create some shadowing at the lake. All right, we got to start darkening that ice. Let's darken the ice, yo. Let's just take some blue. And you can sometimes get some purple in it to deepen it. Because the two of them make quite a nice dark color. And we're going to come back here at the horizon. And on the front of the landmass, as you'd want to, I'm going to wiggle that back and forth. All right. It's kind of a somewhat wet application, but not like watercolor wet, just for acrylic wet. Make sure your horizon line is level because your lake would definitely, when it froze, be level. <laughs> Now, with that all completely still wet, I'm going to get a damp brush, a small bright, this one right here that I used earlier, and I'm going to come forward and I'm going to just pull this color this way, guys. Can you do that with me, pulling the color this way. Isn't that fun? So the trick is to just try to get it as straight as you can. <laughs> For me, that's always a challenge. Sometimes I like to come across and kind of take some of that blend the opposite way. I'm going to come in, see I have a tree here, a tree here, and a tree here. Oh, you're putting a reflection the tree. Yeah, the thing about iced up reflections is that they're very soft and out of focus. So I tend to put them in and then soften them out um, as I go. But it's nice to get them in now if you can. I'm going to come across this time for that blend. Okay, how are we doing? I do. 
it's just a it's just about being thoughtful at this stage you know come back in i can still tap in a bunch here kirk, kirk, kirk. at the water's edge and that's what i've really got to watch is that uh, am i keeping those lines sort of straight because i tend to want to go reep, reep, but you don't want to if you can avoid it that throws the effect off and see how we're softening those reflections we'll keep doing that as we go don't worry Are you level? Be level, yo. Be level. Now, along our bank edge, I think I just want to remind myself to put a little black. Kind of loosely. Because that can be quite dark. I don't want to go all the way up into my landscape. I just want to darken my bank a bit. Just a little bit of your bank. Darken it up. Right. Now I've got to kind of build this up here and I've got a cabin to put in. To get the cabin in, I kind of got to resolve some of what's happening back here with these trees and their colors. And then I'll be able to tuck a cabin in and then kind of add some forward facing bush and then give a little embankment and start to give some little falling down uh, fencing. Mm that you might have. So I'm going to take my purple over to my red a little bit and I'm going to, it's still going to be red, but you'll see that it's a deeper red, right? Cause we've taken the purple into it. So we're going to start to see this, add some of this red back here. I'm going to wiggle that in, touching here and there. It's not too solid. I'm not trying to paint out everything that I've done. That would be not helpful to our goals. And bring it down into here. Oh, that's, that's. Every time you do one of these, you're just like, you put some new leaves in some places, the landscape changes in your, in your little spirit in your mind. I love the fall color with the snow. I think uh, some people are going through that right now. Yeah. Based on pictures that I'm seeing shared. Just tapping up the tree just a little bit here and there. I live in Texas where I don't experience this at all. In fact, uh, there was so much excitement. My son almost lost his mind because like a, a raindrop froze out there. It's true. It was, like a raindrop or two, man, just, just fluttery. lofted a little bit slower. And he was like, ah, that's the best thing ever. <laughs> One is just generally like, what? Okay. Pulling that in. See that I kind of try to pull these little shapes in and I break them up. Where, where am I putting this? I'm putting this like where, imagine the way that trees are clumps in this sort of 360 degree space right and they have branches coming out and the light hits the top of those and some branches will will shade that and then when they're turning leaves some of them maybe have a little more red in them and so there's this wonderful randomization they're not solid masses in any way no they're not that's not their that's not their norm i may come here and get a little bit of my white into my purple i kind of want to it's sort of go ahead and get some of that magenta into this weird sort of we're going to come forward a bit we need a we need a value that lets us see our fence we have to start lightening things a titch titch guys so just think of this as the next run of uh weird little bushes hmm. little layers of shrubbery yeah yeah in the in the cold, surviving their first frost. Maybe coming up here. 
cut the tree a bit. All right. And again, we won't plant, we won't put our house in quite yet, right? Because we have to tuck it between a row of bushes here and these back, back babies. I know I'm, I'm having a lot of feeling about that. But what I can tell you is that's what's happened, yo. But one thing I can do is I can take my black right now. And I can say, I know my cabin starts right here and comes down to here. So I can begin to give it a path mm. down to this part of the shore, my dark paint. That'll help me later. Not really helpful now, but will help me later. <laughs> It'll help me later, yo. Let's get a little bit of our burnt sienna and our blue together again, as you do. You get some white into that. Give me a little more burnt sienna. See how quite deep that gets. I'm gonna just touch on the edge again. Honestly, a lot of this is for my fence. Mm. And also, if you think about this, kind of like the mist on the ground. Maybe a little more blue in that one. Talking about that a bit. Touching it there. So it's kind of like, if it gets in anywhere where you're like, oh, that's a little bit of a hot mess, guess what? Look at that soften. What? That's right. It's like magic. So if you've got to soften it, you just kind of get it on here. And because the paint is still sort of wet and the brush is still a little bit damp, you can create those a little bit of a mist kind of happening to where your cabin's going to be. So you can kind of see it's like a little misty moment in the shrubberies. Because they're awesome like that. They have little mist moments. I love little mist moments. Little mist moments make me happy. Now, the cabin. Let's get into a bright. A bright is a square, tidy little brush. It's a little different from a flat in that the filaments from here to the edge are a little shorter. So that can give you some more control. Super helpful when painting things like fences or cabins. I'm going to come here and I'm going to put in a cabin. And the cabin is going to start out. Just kind of a, oh, you know what I might need to do? Mm. Might need to dry it if there's too much wet paint underneath. But let's get the basic shape in. This is the front of my cabin. Try to keep those lines as straight as you can. <laughs> it helps. Right? I'm always having to adjust that part. And then we're going to put a little triangle up. Cabin's got to have a roof. It has a roof, roof. Right. And then, of course, the cabin's got to have some of itself go back. So, I'm not here. We've got a little cabin going back. Can you see where the cabin goes back? Mm -hmm. And I just use my brush up and down. It's going to kind of make that line. A little cabin go back. Cabin go back. Take that back this way. We're going to put a bush there so you're really not a lot of pressure. Just so you know. Now the roof's going to kind of come down. It's a little bit. It goes down a little bit into perspective, right? Yeah. And then we're going to pull this down. There you go. We built a cabin. You did. We did. Now I don't. I want the fence to be quite dark. So I'm going to dry this. And I'm going to show you a trick I have for getting out these neat and tidy little twigs and branches. <sighs> So while she's doing that, I will remind you to uh, make sure you use your air mover on lowest heat setting because it can affect your paint, cause color shift, all that not fun stuff. So only use your hair dryer on the lowest heat setting. And uh, don't forget to check out our website, theartshirt.com, if you want to join up for any of our, of our messages systems. You can uh, find out information on that in the link in the descriptions down below. Okay. So in a couple places in this, I'm going to be using what's called fluid paint. So I've got carbon black here, which is lovely, but you could use Mars black, whatever you got. Titanium white. 
But guess what? If you didn't, you didn't want to get this, you could get this. And it would work the exact same way. And guess what color it is? Titanium white. So you're totally fine there. And uh, interestingly enough, lamp black and carbon black are very similar colors. And that's also the same thing. So it's really up to you and your preference. The difference between the difference between those paints is the pigmentation. So there's just a lot of pigment in the golden. And if that's something you really, really need to make sure that you're seeing, it can be really nice to have. But it's not something you should feel at all stressed or anxious or worried about. So I'm going to put out some of my fluid paint. And I'm going to start with a number four round. Shall we find one? Mm -hmm. Boom. That's a number four round. We like that. Going to load it up with some paint right there. And I think I want to put in a tree. Just one? Just one. And I'm coming back a slight angle towards the right. Here's my trunk. It's about a brush width there. That's not too bad, right? Now it's got a little bit of a branch that's going to come out. And a little friend that will bow out like that. Oh, tree has friends? Yes, it does. And then maybe this part will bow like that. See, it has a slight bow. I'll smooth a little joint here so it feels a little more tree-like. But we're just implying those little bumps and shapes and things. It can happen in a tree's life. Trees' lives are very, very involved. And Okay, there we go. Look at those little branches coming up. They just keep branching off from each other. They do. That's what the tree wants to do. And if you think about why a tree makes branches, well, it's looking for sunlight, right? So if you imagine, well, I've got to give my tree some food. It needs some light food. It's solar num nums. Helps you think about where would you put a branch. If a branch gets overly thick on you, before the paint dries, take a wet, clean brush. And you can come back and thin it. See how it did? Thin that branch down. Thin that branch down. Don't be, don't be worried about it. Now there's a couple uh, little twigs and things that are going to happen here. Twigs going to happen. Twigs will happen. Let's put another little tree start coming up here. Maybe have a little friend. Kind of smaller little branches. There we go. That looks very tree-like, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Twiggy, 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 twiggy. We need a big boy growing up here. I'm not going to, um, I'm going to actually kind of tuck it right here. Start it there. First little trunk, first little branch. You know, it's really just about giving everything little, little, little branches, little places to grow out and have their little tree life, as trees want to do. Trees want to live. Trees want to be okay. I'm going to give some little distant, uh, very light twigs. These distant little twigs. And we're going to put some bushes around them so that'll be okay. Now I'm going to switch to a very small bright. My preference for fencing in the size range is the number two bright. So here's a number two bright. Uh, this is a ruby set number two. But what you can see is it's just a nice crisp little brush, right? So into the paint go we. And let's put in kind of a pole right there. There's a, there's a nice little, little fence post. Now over here, Need a little fence post. 
And actually, I think for effect, I'm going to need some more wintry mist right there. Some more wintry mist? I think I need it. I'm going to have to put it in, guys. I'm All sorry. Right. Put some more mist in. Got to do it. It just needs it so that the fence feels like it's, you know, coming up in snow. So that's just the white and the dark purple. Oh, it makes sense. Just misting it up. I'm just making little kind of little wiggly shapes. Wiggly shapes are very powerful shapes. You wouldn't think they are, but they really are. Now I'll come back and finish in my house and tidy up those edges, but I just want to make sure that my my fence comes up to some mist. Because hmm. it needs some. Some mist is needed. Some fence in the mist. You can always come in with some of your red and purple into that and see it creates some nice atmospheric effects that are distant and soft. And that's what you're really trying to talk about is just distant and soft. And again, you know what to do if you need it softer, right? Use your blending brush. Blending brush. Soften it up. Right? It's there, but it's just gently out of focus. Okay, back to our fence posts. The beginnings of our fence posts. So I think it's important that our fence post be kind of sometimes, you know, kind of broken and thin and not always standing up because it's been a minute since anybody's put the fence in and the weather and freeze and thaw and freeze and thaw. Cows were messing with those. Using Deer them. come through, man. Stuff has happened to gotcha. the fence. And there's no association here, right? There's no homeowners association to be like, hey, fix your fence. <laughs> Sorry. You guys that seemed a little that. dark about that, didn't I? Like, oh, homeowners associations. Which are good if you're trying to protect the neighborhood. I get it. But out here, there isn't one. You, you the property owner are not under that stress. And that's just my little, you, you know, if you're like, I love my gated community, t tidy up your fence. Paint what would make you feel better. Don't worry about what makes me feel better. And remind your neighbor that their grass is a quarter inch too tall and they should mow <sighs> that's it. That's a little too close to it. So in life, we, we genuinely had that happen. You know, take, so I put a little cross beam right there, but then there's kind of a broken one that comes down. Right, and then maybe here we only got one fit. This bottom one, it just fell away. What happened to it? We don't even know. Right, maybe these two could actually have some, but then you know, back here it gets that, and you can even kind of do a little. Oh wow, it's just gone wrong, right? So there's some fence. Knock it down. Let's uh, let's have a board that comes down there. There we go. Some stuff has happened to the fence. Yeah. What do you do about that, though, right? Because you've got to. What gotta, do you do? You've got to put some snow on your fence, right? So you're going to take this same brush and you're going to go into your blue, white, and black, and you're going to kind of make this cool gray color. So that's our first of the snow colors that we're going to put on our fence. I'm going to come here to the top of my fence and then just down a little bit. Top of my fence and down. Putting some snow on my fence. What? Yeah, that's how I put snow on my fence. And that's on the, it's definitely on the lake side because the wind blowing the water. Yeah, that was like not a thoughtful thing that I did. It just happened to have worked out well. I like to own that. Like sometimes like as an artist, you'll be like, I was painting along and uh, I happened to get something right out of the blue. <laughs> And that's, that's a little tougher when you're not working from references is that's sometimes why it's nice to have some references um, that you, that you use. Yeah. Because it allows you to uh, know that, hey, oh, the lake side of the fence would be where the snow was heaviest. 
Okay, so here we go. Looking good, right? Yeah. Now on top of that, I'm going to get a little bit on the edge here. And I'm going to come in just a little bit on my tree. Just kind of come on that little edge. There we're doing. It's not a birch, it just has some discolorations. It's got some stuff happening. It's a very cold day. There we very go. Very tall tree. It is, man. My trees are big. One of my favorite things is I had early in my days, I had painted a, a painting and had some trees in it. And my mom had like called me after and she's like, ah. she's like I got to tell you something. Your trees are the wrong size. She's like, it's just crazy. And so I sent her the reference photo and she was like, oh, those are crazy trees. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's why I painted them. <laughs> I liked it so much. So, you know. What I learned from moments like that is, is yeah, there's some general rules about landscaping and trees, but at the end of the day, what's the big deal is the way you feel when you execute it. You know, I, I picked that reference because the trees were kind of crazy and cool like that. But that just sort of lets you know, like, hey, there's a lot of different ways that trees could be painted. You can see just putting a little bit there, and I might come in, uh, definitely come along some of my wiggies. Get a little more active paint than that, what I'm doing there. Now, the edge of this brush helps me have a fine enough line here. If I didn't have this brush with a nice edge, this would be really tough. But I do, so it works, so I'm okay. You know. And that little bit of snow that really helps almost set in those black twigs, right? Kind of really helps them be. But guess what else we've got to do? What else do you got to do? We're going to come back with a little bit of brighter white. Put some snow on the beach. No, no, no. No, just there. You're going to put highlights on the post. Yeah. So I was not even close. No, it's okay, though. I mean, I'm going to get to the beach in a second, so it's not like you were off. <laughs> So these are just the like little pops of uh, brighter, more noticeable snow that you've got going on. You know, you can, you just need them to be brighter than what's underneath. See how we do? And that kind of just says that the snow has uh, got a little bit of shading to it. <laughs> shady snow. A little bit of shady snow, right? Now I'm going to get back to uh, maybe my memory cat's tongue. And let's do a little bit of our purple and our blue together. Make an interesting kind of combo color. And let's get some white into that. And that's going to be our snow base. Right. I'm going to come here. I've got another little tree I'm putting in, but I want to get my snow in. Come along this little edge. And I want to curve, I kind of do chunky uh, brush strokes. And the reason is, is that snow kind of clumps into these weird banks. And so that, that chunkiness is very helpful to me in talking about that and getting that represented the way I might want. And now I'm going to come along here down that path. There's a path there. And let's come back here. I'm going to pull the path even in closer to the house. See how I'm doing? Yeah. Maybe the snow's kind of accumulating at the corner of the house. And and again, much heavier towards the river embankment. Kind of lightly dry brushing where maybe maybe it's like a dusting of snow, right? First layer of snow is happening. Yeah. 
It's also kind of nice at this stage to take a little bit of this color. Come along the top of your roof. I am going to install a chimney. <laughs> now the roof is going to, let me show you, it's going to come kind of back. The bottom of your roof here needs to follow the line of your roof up there. I'm not sure where it was, but I accidentally watched a documentary on the history of chimneys. And wow, was that an important thing that we worked out. <laughs> was it? Yeah. For Chim not dying completely? Chimney science is super it's important. It's a big deal. <laughs> yeah. It's like, there's all, there's some stuff there. Let's take a little of our uh, red and purple while we're at it. You know, a little more red. And let's be sure that we uh, kind of come down here and add some of that to our ice base. Now I'm doing. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> I'm going to come brush across. Isn't that nice? A little bit of that. It's kind of bright. We're going to dust over it with some snow and some stuff later, but it can be nice to have some of it here and there. You just stop now. This is a very World War Z painting. It is a little World War Z, isn't it? <laughs> 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 this whole lesson is about to go south where I put a bunch of zombies in on the <laughs> Kevin the Kraken visits. <laughs> <laughs> All these like dislikes happen like this is not the painting we were promised. Or you get a whole bunch of likes. You just never even just, know, right? Just never know. All right, let's get this next tree kind of in and in, in some like, uh, well, yeah, next tree kind of in. And then we'll add some little twiggly bits and some stuff. So right here, little line coming up. He's kind of like a bush, right? What do you mean? The tree. But he's a little bit, he's a bit, he's a bit, you know, cool and stuff like that. So I let him have a rest there. I am Groot. No more Groot. Okay. So while I'm at this, I'm going to go ahead and add some of my fluid white to my mix. Remember, while I am using the golden titanium white, and I do think it is awesome sauce. I do. You can use this. I mention that because sometimes people get it into the store and then they kind of panic because they're like, what? I'm going to get a little of that onto my brush. And I might even pick up a little bit of that weird purple color. But even so, with all this kind of fluid white, it's going to be so light. Can you even just do some like little white, like little highlighted? Uh, it's just like a little bit of maybe snow that caught on it, right? Because if it snowed here, it's snowed in other places. Mm -hmm. And that's important to be thinking about. And I like to put some little, again, with a little brush, little twigs. You can't twig up enough. Twig it up. And I feel like sometimes these little highlights help really with the contrast of these dark branches. Because winter branches can get quite dark. I'm using a number one monogram liner. Comes in the same pack as this brush and that um, two inch cutter that I put to the side a minute ago. Comes in that pack. Uh, call, I think I called it the beginning and end set. <laughs> That's why. Now you know. You're like, what was she thinking? That's what that set was about. I think a lot of people were unclear on, like, what it was about. But that's why. However, if you just understand what the brush does, you can find generally, even in your own brush set, a brush that does it. So... Quite nice, isn't it? Let's come back, get our two inch baby back. Which, you know, is a little bit of 
this kind of color mixed into the white to make that first little run of tree snow and then we'll I'll give it the little highlight that it deserves. Mm. How are we doing? Do we have any questions while I highlight this tree? Because we've seen me highlight these other trees. Let's see here. I'll go over here and see what's going on. What's, go what's, what's going go on? Now, why is uh, Michelle was asking, why did you put the purple down first on the snow? Because snow really isn't white. It generally is, um, it has a lot of white in it, but it's a lot of grays and shadows, and it tends to reflect the colors of what's around it. Mm. So if I have a lot of purple or reds or blues and stuff throughout the painting, or it's a really monochromatic landscape, I've got to create a base that I highlight my snow on, and that actually helps it look like snow. So that was my thing. Good question. Hmm? This is a good question. I think. You know, I have to say, thank you. Is it, uh, I'm not sure if it's Simone. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing it's Simone. Simone, you have a wonderful name. <laughs> thank you. you know, I, 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 I'm always bad saying names for the first time. So when I read, but thank you, Simone. She, she's, uh, she's one of our, our in chat patrons. So thank you oh, for helping so support our show that. and making this possible. Are our bubbles working? Um, I'm fairly certain that if you pushed a bubble button, that Do we have the come... heart party song? Because I feel like we should celebrate all the patrons from chat. The bubbles would come out if you pushed the button, I think. Let's find out if that's true. For, her. For everyone who came today, but this is, this is, nope. Oh, wait. I just didn't understand the buttons. Yes, it's working! I think that worked. Ah, oh, Texas snowflakes, barely. They're coming my way. I don't know if you get to see them at all. And they're I got like, a little music going, too. They're going somewhere. They, you'll have to just trust me. They're landing all over my palette. <laughs> <laughs> you have some. They're going everywhere, but in front of your camera. There. Oh, there's yeah, one. You got one. I saw one. Uh -huh. See, that bubbles for you. There. There's, there's, there's a we couple. We should do the over bubbles there. when people there. do the the, the in there. chat page or thing. So there they are. They were just top of my head, John. Stop it. There's a bubble. He's <laughs> just trying to catch bubbles. There's a bubble. There's a bubble. <laughs> <laughs> there's bubbles. There's bubbles, bubbles are happening. There's, there's bubbles. We'll we'll do that from now on. When we have an in chat patronage, we'll hit the bubble machine. It's yeah. a sad bubble today, but we'll hit. We'll get some fresh bubble solution. You know, when bubble solution sits out, it gets a little. It does, especially in an air conditioned room. Especially in an air conditioned room, it has a little. It gets bubble. very jelly. I should look like I've been in a bubble tornado. It, but instead we have very dense bubbles, which just only move inches off of the. Here. They're heavy water bubbles. Breathe in. Breathe out. We're more than halfway through, so we're doing really good. Are we? Mm -hmm. More than halfway. All right. More than halfway. We can do that. This is looking beautiful, isn't it? It very much is. I, I just am digging it, digging it, digging it, digging it, digging it, digging it. Digging it. Super excited. So I gotta, I'm going to work on my cabin a little bit just because I feel like it. I'm going to take a little bit of my blue with some of my black. Right, making that kind of steely thing, and I'm going to get some white into that. And let's come across and make some um, cabin texture. Give me a cabin texture. Yeah. Cabin texture. And I might even cabin texture a little bit back here. But remember, you've got that, that side there. I'm also going to come in and give myself a chimney. So I'm going to use the number two like I did for the fence. I'm going to go right here. Chimney. <laughs> also, while I'm here, I'm going to come here and go. Door. It's dark, but it's there. If that makes sense. There's a door. Of some kind. Implied. Now I'm going to take a little of my yellow and my cad red light. So I've got cad yellow medium, cad red light, cad red medium, quina uh, quinacridone magenta. But you could use an orange for this. Don't feel like you've got to have that exact, you know, exact, exact. And I come here and go window, window, and somewhere little top window. <laughs> huh. That's what's happening there.
My windows got excited. That is good. So the cabin has a little bit of a window. That's kind of nice. That'll be fun. We put a little bit of highlights and stuff out into the uh, the world. Now I'm going to get one of my favorite little brushes. These are called Cambridge. These little suckers right here are Cambridges. They are a mix of uh, hog bristles and synthetic filaments. But if you just want a small scruffy brush that will let you do scruffy things. So I'm going to take a little of my yellow over to my cad red medium. Mm. I'm going to load up both sides of my stiffy stiff brush. I'm going to come up here to the top. And I'm going to just wiggle some stuff out. Mm. Let's get one that's a little weird. Like that one's a little, that needs a moment to the spa. <laughs> yeah. It needs a brush spa moment. All right. So back same color. All I'm doing, if you see, is I'm just touching and tapping and kind of wiggling around. And this little bit implies what? These little leaves that could be there. A little orange in that. These little leaves that could be the last bit of the bright fall that didn't maybe get taken down in last night's winter storm. I'll take a little of my yellow and my orange here. And these little bony trees that we've painted in so very painstaking are holding them up the last few leaves of the season. Mixing in some stuff. I'm going to come down here. I kind of moved on, John, because sometimes I like to do that. I see that. I did that. Move in some color, some places. Maybe come there. Let's go into our yellow a bit. There we go. Little bush there. You could have some color, couldn't you? Yes, you could. You got some leaves. You've held out. You can just sort of see how this brush is sort of. A stiffy hot mess. Yeah, just a little brush. If you figure. had my cloud brush, you could use it here. There's a lot of brushes that will do this job. Now, you like brushes that are kind of all different places because then that helps you not make patterns, right? It does. And in and, and that looseness, like, you become familiar with the tool and then you kind of lean into its nature, right? And then you, le you like, learn about it. And sort of wonderful i just grabbed some more red look i'm gonna isn't that just stunning when you add that little pop of color it is just a little pop of color does a lot does a lot I'm come right here and add stronger pop of color in that kind of space and maybe down here those are nice i think it's fun too to put weird As if there was something that happened here, you know? Yeah. I don't know what. I don't know what. You don't? No, but I'm going to add a little bit to the snow. Even before I put the white snow on. I'll put some more there, but I just kind of want to make sure that I've got some, before I put my white snow in, even some there. Yeah, we went back and forth and then down. Yeah. We're taking that out of focus. We're going to be coming back with some kind of lavender stuff, but it's starting to just talk about it a bit. The layers matter. We're really whipping through this quite quickly. We are nearly done. Really? Yes. I know it's crazy, right? Because it doesn't feel like it is, but it is nearly done. I remember when I was painting it, I was like, am I nearly done? I could be nearly done. And then what am I going to do? And I was like, oh, I'll rain some snow down on this scene. Hmm. <laughs> rain <laughs> down snow. Rain down the snow. Leaf, leaf, leaf. Now, technically leaf, speaking. It helps you if you go leaf, 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 leaf. Remember to have fun when you're painting because you probably took it up, right? To enjoy yourself. So don't get so serious that you suck all the fun out of your art journey. 
He's serious, but not serious. Serious? Serious, but not serious. Look at that. That's a nice little bunch of... Oh, I love That's that when there's this perfect little pop of red leaves that happens. It just says, fall was here a half second ago. You just missed it. It does beg the question, though. Hmm. Why so serious? <laughs> Dude, I don't know. Nobody need to be that serious, right? keep disappearing off screen. I do because I was looking at something. I was looking. I'm going to come here with the purple into the red and kind of blend that little mass out a bit. You might want to. Thinking about this bit right here. And if it gets away from you, you just come and get a little bit of the background sky color. Come in and mute it back. This stuff is happening, right? It's totally happening. It's totally happening. Now, when I've got all that, I'm going to take this very scruffy little brush, I think, and I'm going to come on the roof. The roof, the roof, the roof has got snow on it. Yes, it does. It's a nice little bit of snow. You know, that's too fluffy of a brush. It's and sometimes that'll happen, and you got to come back with your clean, clean brush and be like, no! Overfluffed. You got overfluffed. The snow got too fluffy. Fix my chimney. Chimney, chimney, what you gonna Good do? Because you need some chimney there. Now, for sure, on top of your chimney, watch these brushes. If you swish deep in a deep jar, drops of water will get up at the top, like up the handle and then come down and drip and just mess up your whole day. So you just put a little bit of, a little bit of snow there. I'm all kind of weirdly tempted to. Come around here with this nice small brush. Talking a bit about the snow banks in this little kind of tight area that we have going on. And now we're going to get back into our big, nice cat's tongue, mm. shall we? And uh, I'll get a little bit of this color kind of into my, but I want to have it be a lot lighter. So it's not pure white, but it's it's definitely not. Tapping up that little bit of snow. It's there. That's kind of nice, isn't it? Mm hmm. Snow peeking through. And you got some shadows and just push this a bit. Got some shadows happening there. It is fun to take a little bit of the blue kind of white color. And yeah, no, it makes like um it implies that the ground is kind of frozen. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, it does. Come along the bank with a 
Put that in a few places. Just along that little bank. Come back into the... That sort of wiggle my brush. Mm -hmm. That helps. It's not quite as cool as that little dragon video where they wiggle the brush and it's a whole dragon, but, you know, you do what you can do. <laughs> make it work. Yeah, make it work. Now I'm going to grab some bright snow. And add it a few places. Not everywhere. A couple places. So not having too much of it is helpful. Because a lot of the scenery is super in shadow, you know? Mm -hmm. And to get back into my bright, my number 20 bright. And get my purple and my blue kind of engaged, as you do. And get some white into it. A little bit dark. I'm going to begin to brush. Look, I'm brushing. Across here. This is sort of the ice, right? Yeah. More of that. Because we mean it. <laughs> brush towards the landscape. And you can see that the colors that we've been working on, and I may have to kind of put that upside down for a second to get this layers built up. Come across here. And then, you know, as you're going, let's come here and just drag some of that back and forth. And then every once in a while you can not trying to get a plaid going. You're just breaking up. Oh, is everything okay? Oh, is it better bubble time? You're making sure we got better bubbles. And anywhere we need to put some color back, we will, but we're trying to freeze the lake. What are you doing? You're See how we're freezing the lake? Now with an even lighter color, just dry brushing it over there, isn't it? We can always come back with a little bit of like that and some color and go. Look. Cause it was sort of everywhere, wasn't it? Now it's like a creamsicle got out on the lake. Yeah. Let's uh, definitely show that. Soft, 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 soft. I'm liking it. And come back with my scuffly brush and, I don't know, maybe a little. I'm going to drop some color here and there. Uh, just like a little something, you know? Into, do you have your detail brush? I don't. <laughs> just, I have my detail brush. <laughs> <laughs> detail brush. I'm going to come here and I'm going to make some beautiful little smoke coming up. I'm going to wiggle up. Hold on, wait, let, me get, let me zoom in on that. Just some lovely little bits of smoke, right? Going on up into the air. Might take my brush and tap a little. Deep orange light into that. Just in case it's wonderful. Maybe. 
under the roof and shade this a bit. It's helpful. Little things that give us nice touches. Now, if you want the birds, and I really like the birds coming in, that's how close to done we are, y'all. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring a little bird and fly it out. The trick with these is that they should be different sizes. And they should be catching slightly different wing currents. Like if you'll notice this, like hit the wing up, come down in a little bird shape. That's how I kind of imply some different angles that my birds are at. Distant little birds who are coming in to your lake to shelter. These are not smart birds that fly south. Mm. Mm -mm. I'm also going to take a little bit of this. This is really weird, but I'm going to come along my uh, shoreline. When I splatter the snow, that little line can help me a bit. Keep that contrast I need for my shoreline. Mm. Weird little things that can make a big difference. It's a good time to look for any places that you're like, man, I need a little twig. Something. Speak just, about the wild world. These are the wild, wild woods. Just touching up your twigs. Touching up my twigs. All right. So I still have my fluid paint there. And I put my splatter tool right here. Oh, my gosh, because I'm kind of bummed it's almost over. Mm. Are you kind of bummed? I'm a little bummed, yeah. A little bummed that it's oh. almost over. It's probably good that I, you know, I could paint all night. Yeah. There's probably good as I'm just so glad that the system is working today. <laughs> so Which system? My head. I'm <laughs> I'm gonna start. There's gonna be a fine jar over there. You know you, you. How am I supposed to know when you decide you're gonna go paint versus when you're gonna talk to the camera? I don't know. All right. So come here. All right. I have loaded it in just to make sure it's distributed well around your splattering tool. And remember, if you don't have this tool and you need to know another way to splatter, there is that whole video. Oh, wow. Right? On the website. There's your snowy scene. Oh, it's snowing hard. It snows as hard as you want it to. You made it out of snow. Make as much snow as you like. If it's a snowy day, let it snow it up. Now, say you get a big snowdrop you don't like. Mm -hmm. Just... Take it out. You can even make them be reflections like on some Just stuff. blend them in. Just blend them in. Just don't even, don't stress on that. And snowdrops should be like a bunch of different sizes because snow can be really sp splotty. It's a little different than rain. Take your little brush. Take a signature that doesn't detract from the whole canvas. What I mean by that is not like, do you sign it fancy or that? But I mean, like, when you're picking colors and size, you, it's good to do a maker's mark. Collectors like to know who made their art. And you'll want to know who made your art. But the signature is part of the composition. And it well, is worth your consideration and your... Oh, let me see. I'm going to bubble up again. Yeah, well, we should bubble up for Kim, who is Kim? another person, another patron who's come to help support and us look, here in chat. Bubbles of heaven. Let's go. So we got it. Oh, let me go over here. You know what I'm going to add? We got a little music because I think that. I have music I can... in my head. My, mu my music's going all the time. I'm one of those friends. Yeah, you it's like there's nothing happening on the bus and, and you look over and your friend's like, yay. You're like, oh my gosh, you're such a goof. Stop it. Are you maybe you're one of those friends with you and there's like a whole group of you on the bus going, we doing it. We doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Be good to yourself. Thank you so much for the support. Be good to each other. Take time to relax and restore. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.